I'd sit in the back of the booth, the control booth. I think I put this in the, I think that uh, Jeff Kissoff quoted this at the beginning of his book, The Box, and I would sit there, and my work was over. There was nothing I could do. And the panel in front of me with the directors and his ADs and the sound man and the light man, and everybody poised with their all these controls, and beyond them the plate glass window and the studio with the sets and the actors in opening positions, everybody waiting, do you know? And the, the, the hand would go around the clock and it would reach the top, There'd be a crash of music, and this voice would say, live from New York, you know, or from Hollywood, or whatever it was. And I knew that my little dumb play was going out to 40 or 50 million people, and there was a thrill that I've never known anywhere else that moment. It was sensational. The pride. Uh, whether it was a good show or a bad one, you got it there. And the trust in the actors and the, all these people in front of you with their little buttons they were pushing. And everybody suddenly was like one large animal and they were all functioning and all the different parts were, began to function before your very eyes. It was thrilling, absolutely thrilling. In every other medium that I've worked in, in the theater and, uh, or in movies, I'll just say in movies, there was no moment in writing movies when you, you, you stop and say, I'm so glad I'm a writer. And there, and there is in the theater when the curtain goes up on your opening night. It's the most incredibly uh, d dynamic, magnetic, wonderful moment. Even if the play is going to be a failure, as they almost always are. But, but there was that moment in television. And the sad thing about it is that it can never happen again. Because uh, it was only in live television that it happened. When at that moment your play was going out. That moment, it wasn't something in a tin that was going out. The, those actors were really being played in uh, Florida and Texas, you know. And uh, it can never happen again. And whenever I have, I don't have sad or sorrowful moments about television, really, but if I ever do, I remember that moment. And it's disappeared, it was there for a brief time, and I was there. And you know, it's something to be very grateful for. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. It made everything worthwhile, that moment, just before you went on the air. Well, d describe during the show, I mean, what you're in the control room, what would, uh, what would happen if something goes wrong? Well, of course, the men and women uh, were geared for something to go wrong. And nothing could go so wrong that they couldn't deal with it. If you, uh, sometimes you'd lose a camera on the air. And the director was very adept, and the associate director, and uh, they were very adept at getting that camera out of the way so that they could continue functioning on two cameras. And the, then the director would wing it from then on, because he'd throw all the, the plans out. And they were good at that. It's no wonder that they had nervous breakdowns and drank too much. <laughs> but they did it. And it was, and the same with the actors, you know. They knew that they had to get to the end of the scene. And if somebody fell over sick, it didn't matter. They had to get through to the end of the scene. And there was something about that, it was, it was spunky, we'll put it that way. There was something terribly binding, uh, bound everybody together, and there was something very courageous about it. And then the show would be over and you'd all go Splitsville in all different directions. And, <laughs>